Cool. You didn't mute us. Oh, yeah, thank you. Good reminder. Hopefully most people yeah. remember to mute themselves, but it is helpful to shut out too many rogue sounds and rogue camera changes. So um, we've had a couple of requests over the last couple of weeks, and uh, one of them was to do some work with sounds. Um, and so, so there is an issue with the sound coming through Zoom, but a couple of people did some research and found out how hopefully we can have that work better this time. So I did try it out um, and it seemed like it kind of worked, but we'll try it again today and see, and see if it works properly today. So if you don't know what normally happens with Zoom is if you're making a long sound, it interprets it as a hum and so the sound will start and then it will just drop away but hopefully we'll see if we can have that sound be more continuous today uh, which makes more sense when you're working with sound and then the other request was just for some 12 rivers so um, I think we'll do that today as well we'll spend some time focusing on that um, so yeah, so let's begin. So we're going to do the sound sitting down. You can do this just sitting in a chair if that's comfortable for you. Uh, I'll sit on the floor. But yeah, just find a spot that's going to be comfortable for you that lets you sit nice and upright. I'll just adjust my feet there a little bit. Oh, just them again. Get my toes sitting in a comfortable position. <sighs> okay. I guess we'll go through and we'll talk about them a little bit first before we um, and then and then we'll practice them through without talking about them as well. So the sounds that we're going to make are long, deep, vibrational sounds, and we're going to use them to vibrate our organs. So instinct when we make sound, often we uh, with our voice, we often think of the sound as coming from here from our throat and that is a significant part of the sound production is what what occurs in our throat but you can think of this as being like the strings on an instrument so you think of it being maybe like the strings on a guitar those strings wouldn't make a great sound um, without the rest of the body of the guitar the rest of the body creates the resonance and, and actually helps to shape that vibration into the, to the sound that we get from the instrument. And it's the same with our body. Yes, we produce sound using our vocal cords, but the whole of our body is involved in creating that vibration. And when we make different sounds, different parts of our body vibrate more and less. And so instinctively, we use different sounds to send vibration to different parts of our body because this helps to release energy. So when we experience different emotions, there are often different sounds associated with them um, because of the effect this has on our body. It helps us to actually release the hormones and move them through, release the nervous stimulation and so on that relate to that emotion. So we're going to go through a set of sounds that works with the five elements and the organs related to that. Uh, and we're going to see how that works vibrating the different parts of our body. So we'll start just taking a moment just to take a few deep, relaxed breaths. Just to clear our mind, relax our body. When our mind is clear and our body is relaxed, it's easier for us to tune in to some of the more subtle things going on inside us and work with our energy more effectively. So deep, relaxed breaths, quieting your mind, relaxing your body. So the first sound we're going to work with is E. And we're going to use this for the kidneys or the water element. Associated with the, the water element is the emotion of fear or excitement. And you think if someone's very fearful 
or very excited, and maybe you think particularly with a small child, what do they do? They tend to make very high-pitched sounds, you know, like a squeal or a scream. And so the E sound naturally creates this, this vibration, which is sometimes achieved uh, with, with a squeal or a scream, um, which raises the energy up the spine from the kidneys up the spine. So we'll give this a try. So if you put your hands into your lower back, above your kidneys, we'll take a deep breath in, and then make a long E. And you may feel that vibration under your hands as this quite literally vibrates your kidneys to help release the um, adrenaline that might get built up uh, that needs to be released. So let's try this again. Take a deep breath in. E Maybe you can feel that vibration there in your kidneys with that sound. So we'll move on. Now we're going to work with the liver. So this is on the right hand side of your ribs, towards the bottom of the ribs. And the emotion related to the liver is um, anger or passion. Both of these are very similar. They're about releasing a burst of energy and putting it into action. So a sound that instinctively relates to this is grrr. So we're going to experiment with this one a little bit. So grrr, like, like growling. If we put our hands on the right hand side of our ribs, we'll take a deep breath in. We'll make a grrr. And as you do that, you might feel that there's this vibration, but it's quite a rough vibration. It's quite a lumpy sort of a vibration through that area. So we're going to refine that vibration. We're going to make it a bit smoother. So instead of grr, we're going to change it to er, like E-R-R, -R, er, and this is going to smooth that out a little bit. So again, deep breath in. Er. You might feel that vibration gets a little bit smoother now. So we're going to get it a little bit smoother again, and this time we're going to use the sound air. It's still going to send the vibration to the same place, but it's going to be smoother. So let's give this a try. Take a deep breath in. Air. So we create a smoother vibration to clear any stagnant energy that might build up in our liver. Okay, so next, moving on to the heart, part of the fire element. And the sound we're going to use is ah. So this is a sound for joy, the primary emotion of the heart. And you can think of this like the sound of, of laughing, ha, 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 or that, uh, that sound of, en of enjoyment where you go, ah. A joyful sound. We're going to feel the vibration in our heart. So bringing your hands into the center of your heart. We'll take a deep breath in. Uh... Feeling that vibration in your heart. We'll do this one more time. Deep breath in. Uh... Uh... 
And one more time, deep breath in. Uh, all right, so next we're going to work with the spleen. So the spleen is on the left hand side of the ribs. It's a lot smaller than the other organs we've worked with, so it can take a little bit of moving your hands around sometimes to find the right spot. So this relates to the earth element and the emotion related to this, or the primary emotion, is worry. And the sound will use is O oh, as an uh-oh, uh, a sound of worry, and we'll feel this vibration into our spleen when we get our hands in the right spot. So, taking a deep breath in. Oh. And again, deep breath in. we have the metal element the lungs so this of course is right underneath our ribs on both sides to really feel it you want to lift your hands a bit higher up if you're placing your hands on your ribs the sound we'll use for this is ooh so uh, um, like ah choo or ooh it's a it's a sound of clearing things out moving things through so bringing our hands onto our ribs take a deep breath in One more deep breath in. Ooh. Okay, so the last sound that we're going to use is mmm. And we use this to harmonize the activity of all of those other sounds, harmonize them together. So the vibration is felt through the whole body. So deep breath in. Then the last part of the practice is to sit in silence and observe your energy. The natural effect of these sounds is that the vibration gets things moving and it clears it through. And so ideally at the end of practicing these sounds, we feel ourselves in a state both of being more clear, but also active and vibrant and alive inside with energy. 
So we'll go through the sounds one more time. We'll just make them each once as we go through uh, so that I'm not talking all the way as we go through um, and then sit in silence immediately after that. Not for too long, just for a little while so you can observe your energy after going through the set of sounds. You can do this simply sitting. You don't have to put your hands in the different places. The vibration does go there even if you don't put your hands there. But it can be useful to put your hands there as a way to bring your attention to what's happening inside you. I will put my hands in the different locations to help to guide you um, if you want to do that. Otherwise, you can feel free to just sit uh, and make the sound. So starting with the water element, the kidneys, the sound is E. Deep breath in. E Next, wood, the liver, the sound is air. Deep breath in. Next, fire, the heart, the sound is ah. Deep breath in. Ah. Now, earth, the spleen, the sound is O. Oh. Deep breath in. Next, metal, lungs, the sound is oo. Deep breath in. Ooh. And then harmonizing all of those together with the sound mm. Deep breath in. And then sitting in silence. Okay, so hopefully you observed some good changes in your energy after doing that. And I can see the focus on my camera is hunting again, so I'm going to change some settings there. What's going on here? Okay, hopefully that will fix it. All right, so we're going to move on to the 12 rivers. So standing up, putting your feet shoulder width apart. We'll actually do some joint rotations after we've just been sitting to get our body moving before we move into the 12 rivers exercises. So starting by rotating your wrists, 
and then we'll change directions and go the other way. We'll then move out to the elbows. And go the other way. Now the shoulders. And the other way. Other arm. And the other way. Waist. And the other way. Knees, bring your feet together. Circles at the knees. And the other way. Ankles. And the other way. Other ankle. And the other way. Neck. For our neck, we'll just tilt forwards and back. And forwards and back. And forwards and back. Tilt to one side and the other 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 side. Bring your head to the center. Twisting side to side, nice and loose. Loosening your whole body, twisting your spine. And coming back, 
to the center. So we'll take just a few moments to simply stand, be aware of our energy, our body and our breath. So feet shoulder width apart, sink into your posture just a little bit, settle down. Keep your back straight, your shoulders wide and open, your neck long, your arms loose and relaxed by your sides. Take a moment to tune into your body. Be aware of your feet, your toes, your ankles, your lower legs, your knees, your thighs, your pelvis, your abdomen, your chest, your back, your shoulders, your arms, your hands, your neck, and your head. Be aware of your whole body. Tune into your breath. Feel the movement of your breath through your body. Each time you breathe in, feel your whole body expand and rise just a little. And as you breathe out, feel your body contract and sink just a little. Deep, relaxed breath. Stepping your feet close together. Breathe in, circle your hands. Breathe out, press your hands apart and look up. Breathe in, circle, gather. Breathe out, spread apart, look up. Breathe in, circle, gather. Breathe out, spread, pressing apart. Look up. Breathe in, circle, and gather. Breathe out, spread. Look up. Breathe in, circle, gather. Breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in. Lowering your hands, breathe out, stepping your feet a little wider. Breathe in, <clears throat> open your arms to the sides, breathe out, turn through, swing your arms through, breathe in, open your arms back to the center, breathe out, turn through, breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe into in the center. Lower your hands. Sit down into a horse stance. Breathe in, pull your fists back. Breathe out, elbows come up, back, forwards, and out. Breathe in, draw your fists back. Breathe out, <clears throat> elbows come up, back, forwards, 
and out. One more, breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in. This time extending your fist through your center as you breathe out. Circle through and open the hand. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, and out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, last one, and breathe out. Breathe in, lowering your hands, breathe out, stepping your feet a little closer together. Breathe in, bending forwards, keeping your legs straight, your back straight, your arms straight. Clasp your hands together, breathe out. Standing up, bringing your arms to shoulder height. Breathe in, bend your legs, swing your arms back. Breathe out, let your whole body bend as you reach back. Once and twice. Breathe in, reach forwards. Legs straight. Breathe out, standing up, still keeping the legs straight. Breathe in, bend your legs, swing your arms back. Breathe out, reach up and back. One and two. Breathe in, reach forwards. This is our last one. Legs straight, back straight. Breathe out, coming up, keeping those legs straight. Breathe in, bend your legs, swing your arms back. And breathe out. One and two. Stepping your feet wide into a horse stance. Breathe in, raise your arms to one side. Breathe out, draw the bow. Breathe in, change to the other side. Breathe out, draw the bow. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. Out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in, circling your hands, circling your arms, gather. Breathe out, press and twist, twist. Breathe in, circle your hands, gather. Breathe out, press, twist, twist. Breathe in, circle. Gather, breathe out, press, twist, twist, breathe in, circle, gather, breathe out, press, twist, twist, breathe in, circle, gather, breathe out. Breathe in, circle, and gather. Breathe out. Breathe in. 
Breathe in. Lowering your hands, stepping your feet closer together as you breathe out. Breathe in. Raise your arms to the sides. Breathe out. Press up. Lowering your hands, breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in, raise, and breathe out. Breathe in, and breathe out. Turning to the side, breathe in, breathe out, reaching forwards with both hands, grab, hold, lift, over. Breathe in, turn. Breathe out, reach, grab, lift up and over. Breathe in, turn. Breathe out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in, putting your hands on your waist. Breathe out, extend into the lunge. Breathe in, sit back onto your heel, turn your foot over, breathe out, reach your chin down, release into the turn, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, sit back, turn your foot over, breathe out, reach down towards your leg, release into the lunge, breathe in, turn. Breathe out, breathe in, and out, breathe in, and out, breathe in, and out. Once more each side, breathe in. Breathe out, breathe in, and out. Breathe in, and out. Breathe in, and out. Breathe in. Pull your fists back. Breathe out. Extend your fist. Breathe in. Big circle behind. Keep breathing in. Big circle in front. Breathe out. Breathe in. Big circle behind. Keep breathing in. Big circle in front. And breathe out. Breathe in, and out, breathe in, and out, breathe in, and out, breathe in. Placing your hands 
on your knees big circle with your body and with your head breathe in circling one direction breathe out going the other way breathe in and out Breathe in and out. Change directions, breathe in. And out. Breathe in. and out last one breathe in and out stepping your feet together breathe in finishing where we started breathe out Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in one more and out. Breathe in, lowering your hands, breathe out, and again, we'll just stand for a few moments, aware of our body, aware of our breath, and maybe with some awareness of the energy circulating, moving inside you, stimulated by the exercises we've been doing. Taking deep, relaxed breaths, observing the energy. And if you just stay there, don't mind me, I need to check the time, see how we're going. Okay. Let the energy continue to circulate. All right, we're going to save our cool down to a little bit later. Um, we'll take the chance to um, focus on probably just one of the exercises in some detail. So does anyone have a particular one that they would particularly like to focus on and look at the details of? If not, you, you can you can quickly let me know if you do. If not, I, I will just pick one. Um, do we have anyone? Nope. All right. I'm going to choose one. Let's see. Uh, what would be a good one? Let's work on the stomach. That's the one that we've started with and ended with today. It's an interesting exercise. So for each of these exercises, as many of you will know, um, when you do them well, you'll feel hopefully at least three things. And that is you will feel some literal massaging inside your body of the organ that the exercise relates to. You'll also feel a kind of a stretching, pulling stimulation through the meridian relating to that organ and some loosening in the spine in the area where the nerves go to the organ and as a result of all of this you may then also start to feel the energy start to flow through that meridian um, so our stomach of course right in the center of our body the stomach meridian 
starts underneath our eyes, comes down to our jaw, then comes up the side of our head, then comes down close to the center, down the neck, comes out across the collarbones, comes down the ribs, then comes back in underneath the ribs, quite close to the center line, it runs down, then it moves back out at the hips, continues down the thigh, underneath the knee it makes a little zigzag across to beside the shin bone, it runs down in the muscle there, and then out on the top of the foot. So we're going to ideally feel all of these things as we do the exercise. So let's start with the massaging of the stomach itself. This comes from this movement. It's stronger when our legs are together. This is part of why we put our legs together. But what happens is we do this movement. If you try doing it and feel inside in that spot just underneath your ribs, there it's a little bit off to the left, but basically underneath your ribs. And you might feel this pulling to one side, then to the other side, one side, then to the other side. As we get a little stretch through this area, it pulls it one way and then pulls it the other way. So there's this massaging of the stomach happening through in there. In terms of the meridian, different parts of the movement stimulate different parts of the meridian. So first we'll look at the top part of the meridian, the beginning of the meridian. To do this, if you stand nice and relaxed, just really, really relax and close your eyes and close your mouth as well and see if you can really relax the muscles of your face. Just let them really relax, let them hang off your bones. Really relax those muscles in your face. Now, keeping your mouth closed, look up and open your eyes for this. Tilt your head up and look up. And then bring your head back forwards again. We'll do this again. Have those muscles really relaxed. Tilt your head and look up with your mouth closed. And come back forwards. So one more time. Mouth closed, everything relaxed. Tilt your head, look up. And you might feel there's this pulling down from your cheekbone down to your jaw. That's the start of the meridian. A little more subtle, you may also feel... The, as this energy then continues up beside your jaw, up beside your head, and then as it comes back down. This movement as well also stimulates this next part from the chin down the neck. Very simply, as we look up with our mouth closed, we feel this stimulating stretch down our neck as it reached, reaches into the torso now. So this next part of the meridian, where it runs down the ribs, comes close to the center line and then moves back out to the hips is again it's stimulated by this part of the movement by our pressing our hands apart if you think about it our uh, if you have a big rubber band a big piece of rubber and you stretch it you make it longer but it doesn't just get longer it also gets narrower in the middle this is essentially what's happening to our body as we do this as we stretch it apart we get a little bit longer but naturally it also wants to pull in at the middle now because there are the bones of our ribs through this part of our torso and then the bones of our pelvis through this part of our torso it can't pull in very much through those because the bones keep them apart but underneath the ribs where the stomach sits it's soft tissue and it can pull inwards. So as we stretch apart, the force comes in and then it goes back out because of this stretching effect in the structures of our body underneath. And so we feel this portion of the meridian come in and then back out. The last part down our legs where it comes down the thigh, zigzags, and then onto our feet. This comes from going up onto the balls of our feet and then lowering back down. So as we come up onto the balls of our feet, naturally our thigh muscles have to activate to stabilize our knee. And we get this activity coming down our thigh muscles. And similarly, as we come up onto the balls of our feet, the force then transfers, and this is where it gets this little zigzag, it moves across 
into the muscle beside the shin, the tibialis anterior, because this muscle has to activate to stabilize the ankle. And so we get this pattern of the meridian moving down through the leg. So when we put all of that together, we're going to have the organ being massaged, we're going to have the stretching of the meridian, we are also going to be having some loosening in our spine as part of that. So let's see if we can try that all as one movement and feel the stimulation right through the stomach meridian. So we breathe in, gathering our energy, and then we breathe out, look up, breathe in, gather our energy in, breathe out, press apart, and look up, breathe in, and breathe out. All right, we'll settle our energy after our practice, so bring your hands onto your lower dentium. Let that energy that's circulating continue to circulate, but also start to gather any excess energy so it settles and stores in your lower abdomen. Moving your hands around into your lower back. We'll massage our lower back, circular movements on our lower back. Then patting down the back and outside of the legs, up the front, inside of the legs, out the inside of one arm, up the back of the arm, the other arm, back of the arm, over the face, over the head, over the neck, down the back, down the legs, up the inside of the legs, out one arm, up the back of the arm, the other arm, over your face, over your head, over your neck. One more time, all the way around, coming up, out one arm, and the other arm, over your face and head. And stopping at the waist, bring your hands back in front, and just let your energy settle. Right, let's see how we're going. Ooh, I'm almost right to time. I um, <laughs> my my clock had an accident and doesn't work anymore. And then I did have another one, but I forgot to bring it down. So cool. I will we'll have a little bit of time to chat and ask any questions, anything like that. So I will allow people to unmute themselves and. Uh, yeah how did the sound go did it was it more continuous um or did it still drop out when we were doing the sounds at the beginning sorry yeah it did drop out it did drop out still okay because i did change the setting the way it's supposed to Lewis? It, dropped, it dropped a little, but we were making noise. So yes. when I was listening to my own voice. I didn't notice that you dropped out. So the very beginning was enough as an example. Of what right. Well, and that's a good point because really you should be tuning into your own vibration. Um, so, so, so that's fine <laughs> in a way. Um, I don't know. Uh, anyway, maybe I'll, I'll change. 
I've I've changed what I can in terms of settings. I think I might I can maybe try with a different microphone at some point. But that's a good point, Lewis. It is mainly about feeling your own vibration anyway. Um, and it didn't disappear. It just got smaller, but it didn't disappear. Okay. Okay. Well, that's not so bad. At least there was some continuity there. Okay. So Elizabeth says, when we did the sound meditation, I felt that the organs gave my hand some heat rather than the reverse that I have sometimes experienced. It was my first time doing it and it was very powerful. Cool. Yeah. It's a, it's a great practice. It's a very simple practice and we are sending vibration. So the organs themselves vibrate as we do this. And so this helps to, to clear well, to stimulate the energy there, but also if there's stagnant energy there to vibrate it so that it, it comes loose and can then be, you know, can flow, flow through. Cool. Any questions, comments, anything like that that anyone would like to share um, at the end of our session? Yeah, if I can. Um, when we were yeah, sure. When we were doing the liver um, with the vibrations, I found I, I could feel the vibration in my liver when I started, but that tailed off, whereas yeah. none of the others did. Right. Okay, and I see someone else has a comment here um, saying it seemed as though some organs vibrated more than others. So this, so some of this is a function of the nature of the organ. A lot of this is due to what is going on with you, within you right now, because how easily an organ vibrates de depends on what's happening inside your body, both physically and also in terms of your emotions. So for the most part, as we practice, what should happen, actually in many ways, the vibration becomes more subtle. So it might be very obvious to begin with, but then it becomes subtle over time because uh, the vibration moves through more smoothly and so it's a more subtle vibration. Uh, but also what should happen ideally over time is that vibration becomes much more even between all of the organs. They, they stay similar. Um, so if you do have a blockage or a weakness or, or something relating to one of the organs or the emotions relating to an organ, it will affect that. Also, um, again, some of it is due to the structure of the organs themselves. And in particular, the one that's really noticeable for this is the spleen because the spleen is so much yeah. smaller than the other organs. And so when it vibrates, it's, 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 it's much, it's, a uh, you can find it, but it's a it's a much smaller vibration to find. Whereas you know the kidneys, the liver, the heart, the lungs are all much larger, and so you can tend to feel that vibration more easily. Hopefully that yeah, answers your question, was... John. Sorry, Martha, go ahead. No, I was going to say that was the one that vibrated a lot, and I thought, what's going on with my screen? <laughs> oh, it really vibrated yeah, a lot. One... Yeah, yeah. Interesting. But, and I thought, Interesting. Hmm, I thought my screen was okay. Yeah, well, so again, when, whenever we notice something, you know, going on in our body, we don't need to jump to any conclusions like, ah, my spleen is, you know, like you have some terrible <laughs> medical condition or anything like that. It can often be more just to do with the, the state of, of what's happening. So, of course, your spleen, well, it does relate to the emotion of worry. It also relates, as relates to that is sympathy. So if you tend to have a lot of sympathy, this, this can um, bring a lot of activity to the spleen. It also relates to, so as part of the earth element, to sweet flavors. So our sugar metabolism, um, lots of different things like that. So feeling a vibration strongly is not necessarily a bad thing, but as you feel different vibrations in the organs, you may notice some patterns that um, that do make you want to investigate a little bit further and go, hmm, I do wonder what's going on there. Maybe maybe I should look in, into that and see, again, whether it's within your emotions or other aspects of your life that, that are affecting that to make it a standout from the others. Um, so Clayton says, some practices slide from the right to the left for the liver and the descending voice. I'm not entirely sure what you mean about sliding from that the right. That was me. That was oh, Beth, Beth alias Clayton. <laughs> Beth, Beth Clayton. The so Beth we would Clayton. start in the right with the, the liver sound 
but then in a descending tone, going from right side, right sided liver to the left, not necessarily going all the way to the spleen. So this this is how it felt inside for you. Well, no, I was just saying that. Um, have you had experience? Because uh, I've had one practice where we went started right in a higher, um, like oh, in a in a not oh. a crescendo. What do you call it? A, Shindo. <laughs> and a low, yeah. it, the tone goes from a high to a low as you go across. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, maybe. Uh, maybe I know what you mean. Um, so I'm not 100% sure if I know what you mean. So part of so the tones do have different effects uh, as well as 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 the overall um, shape of the sound. Um, I, I wonder if part of that may have been. What are you artifact. hearing from me? I'm not hearing much from you at all uh, when we're doing this. Okay. Starting that... with the right side and your yeah. mild pressure, and you're going from right lobe of the liver to the left. And so yeah. you're. Ah. Okay, I'm not. Sure, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you mean. I I wonder if maybe it could okay. be an artifact of our sound setup, possibly. But but in, no, I'm not. I'm not entirely okay. sure what you're referring to. I I I think I'm just having a guess. There's also a meditation. You know how you have the om. There's also one that it's you, so it goes vertical. So are you referring okay. to the one when you're using? You go from high to low, and you go. You, this is just another sound. It's just a meditation, like it's om. Sure. You're using the liver sound, but you're going from the, the largest primary lobe to the inferior lobe. So, but you're going in the direction. You're going from right to left on the okay. abdomen. So you're not talking. I don't know about how what... I can make that any clearer. Okay, so you're not talking so. about what we've done. You're talking about something you've seen elsewhere. No, is that what you're I'm saying? saying in previous, like what I stated in a previous practice, we have gone from a right liver lobe to the left. So you're following not just one lobe of the liver, and you're sure. going from the primary right side to the left. But you are going in. You're using that same um, sound, but it's in a descending tone as you go from right to left right so i think the confusion is you're talking I, about a, a practice that you've done a different time not what we've done in this video or anything right oh, yes I, and, and right okay so it's not it's, it's not the sound it's set up uh so no but it does make sense uh in terms of so combining the effects of the tone along with the shape of the sound yes you can use this to direct how the energy moves through certainly yeah yeah, it's it's adding another layer. So we we've been fight, we've been working with the shape of the sound as we do this, um, but but then you can add also the tone and the shape, and then you can add other things as well, and it becomes uh, a more complex practice. Yeah. Cool. Does anyone else have any? Uh, uh, Any questions, comments? I have a uh, Lewis. question on, on the stomach. If we're dealing yep. with worry, yes. would it be correct to say uh, if I want to get rid of my worrying in part of that exercise, that it should be done as I'm exhaling? And if so, because of the direction of the meridian line going down, should it go out my foot? Or in terms of this, is there another in terms of, getting rid of my? Are you saying in terms of the oh, sound? Not this. No, back to the twelve organs. Sorry, not the sound. <laughs> okay. To the twelve or uh, twelve rivers in the twelve rivers with stomach. Yeah. Uh, so can I get rid of my worrying by yeah. exhaling it and think, what am I worrying? Exhale. Does it go out my foot? Does it go out the side? Where does it go? Okay. So, so, so it doesn't necessarily need to go out your foot. This, this is the pattern of, of the flow of the activity of uh, the meridian. Now, certainly in terms of worry, 
there will be a general pattern within the body that tends to be when we worry, maybe we lift our energy, and then when we release the worry, we drop our energy. So yes, that can occur. Um, but it's not that we necessarily want to channel and move that energy uh, specifically out through the meridian. The meridian is for circulating energy within the body. What we want to do is we want to bring it out from the organ so that it so that it's not stuck in there certainly so that the organ starts to flow but then it can often be discharged more generally because we want we want to bring it we want to to you know dis discharge it any way we need to that can be down to the earth that that can be out you know out in another direction just because we've brought it out so it's now free and circulating rather than stuck it's not so much that we want to discharge energy through those organ meridians the organ meridians really are generally too fine for that type of thing they're more about the circulation rather than using for discharging if that makes sense we would use the extraordinary meridians more possibly sometimes for discharging so once we've brought it up we've got it into circulation then we can bring it out and discharge it does that make some sense to you lewis yeah okay good cool yeah the the organ meridians really are um quite fine circuitry <laughs> within our body we do want to unblock them so that they're unimpeded so that they can flow um but but they're about circulating and bringing the energy in a balanced harmonious way to every part of our body they're not designed to carry or discharge large amounts of energy all right i also have a question about the stomach if we still have time okay let me find where are we who are we talking to uh, little star let's go ahead yep uh, also there you are. Cool. <laughs> yep. beth as Depending well what device i yes it's either yeah, beth or goodness. little star everyone's on the really device. trying everyone's really trying to confuse us with their different names on zoom compared to what we actually <laughs> Okay, go ahead. What what was your question? Um, so I have a comment that follow a comment and a question that follows up on both things that Lewis had mentioned. So first of all, I think the sound stuff worked just fine um, for yep. the practice, so I wouldn't worry about that. Um, and then I also have a, a question about the stomach, and I loved the explanation of that. And as I was thinking about sort of the movement of the stomach, so I my I have been getting my butt kicked by acid reflux. Oh, so I, no. I was trying to think about the move, movement of that, of, of, so that movement along with, I have a slight hiatal hernia. And so I was thinking yeah. about stretching that direction and if that would help, if it would exacerbate problems. And then I also started thinking about the energy involved in all of it and I, it became mm -hmm. this ball of confusion. Okay. <laughs> so do you all have right. any insight on that? Yeah. So certainly you don't want to overstretch that area if, if you're having weakness and a hiatal hernia and so on but you can see how with this movement it's it's definitely doing things in that area right it's definitely stretching and creating stimulation through this area where the uh, the, the sphincter is about you know which relates to the reflex and also where uh, the hiatal hernia possibly is so I guess the key is you want to do it in a gentle enough way that you get the stimulation and that you encourage those tissues to become rehabilitated and stronger. You can think about it like a, a gentle stretching exercise. If you have an injury in some part of your body, you don't want it to just sit there and stay immobilized because it will continue to be weak or even get weaker. You also don't want to like work it too hard because that's going to injure it as well. In order to bring health back into that injury, we need to keep, get it moving again and we need to get it moving through its proper range of motion, but we need to do it in a, in a gentle way that encourages it to become gradually stronger over time. And so you can see the activity into that area just make sure that you do it in a gentle enough way that that's the effect it's having that it's not um 
it's not straining as you do it but it's just creating some gentle stretching which will improve the nerve activity the blood flow and so on and hopefully help to strengthen and tone those tissues over time to, to help improve those issues does that make sense it does and thanks for picking yeah. that one because that was super helpful for me particularly <laughs> okay great fitted fitted well with what you needed today that's cool all right did anyone else have have anything they wanted to to talk about before we finish no okay cool well nice to see you all again apologies about um, <laughs> last week uh it's been the first time in I don't know how many months, so not too bad of a hit rate, but obviously I, I, I do aim to not have that happen again in the future. So um, look forward to seeing you all again next week, hopefully. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.